Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to more tips and tricks on Generation Zero. And today we are going to deep dive into your enemies. We're going to go through all the different robot types. We may do this in a two-parter. Hope you're going to enjoy it. It's going to be super useful. Let's do it. I hope you're enjoying Generation Zero. It is a fantastic um, game. But as you progress through the game, life gets more and more difficult. And half the battle is understanding and identifying what enemies you're coming up against and being able to combat them and find their weak spots and uh, stay alive. So today what I thought I would do is we're going to go quickly through all the different enemy types uh, one by one. Um, I'll identify what they are, what the different types of per um, robot class is and we'll talk a little bit about weaknesses and then we may give you some tips in this video I'm not sure or what I will do a separate video where I come up with strategies and show you how to kill each of the different groups so essentially what we have in the game is we have six different um we have six different robot types and within each robot type there will be three to four different classes so we'll get into the classes in a minute but essentially you've got the ticks the runners the hunters the harvesters the tanks and the seekers so um you can see them all pictured there if you're playing the game i'm sure uh, at least a few of these are familiar to you now Let's take the example of the Hunters class and I'll go through all the different classes that you can do, you're going to expect from each of these enemy types. So essentially what you will find with every um, robot class is there will be subclasses there. So every robot type, sorry, there will be classes. So you'll get the prototypes, military, phoenix and then the apocalypse. Um, and uh, you can imagine as they go from left to right they get more harder to kill um, so we have to develop strategies for each and every one of them um, what you'll find also is that what the developers have done very uh, smartly in this game is that you'll find more of the prototypes than in the starting area and as you progress through the different missions you're going to find more military and then more phoenix etc etc so um, certain areas are, have an abundance of certain uh, robot classes and a variety of them for you to play around with and say good day to and shoot a couple bullets at and etc etc so what I thought I would do today is do basically a theory session. We'll go through every robot uh, type. We'll go through all the different classes and we'll talk in depth about um, all the different robot types, uh, robot classes and uh, where their weaknesses might be. And then in part two, we'll go through and we'll show you how to um, actually do some um, some effective um, slaying, I guess, is the right word and um, put all this theory into practice. So let's start with the first class that you pretty much come across straight away virtually as you start the game and that is the runner class. And they're described as quick on their feet, often moving in packs. The runner will work together with its allies to wear survivors down with automated weaponry. The pack will start a fight at long range and various, various weapons like SMGs and rocket launchers then try to move closer. These machines are similar to dogs and wolves in the aspect of the aesthetics pack behavior and movement you generally find these guys if they if we're talking purely runners on their own you'll generally find them in a pack of three or a pack of five so if you come across them in the uh, on the map in the environment somewhere and you're wondering how many there might be and how many you've got to kill generally uh, be expecting at least three maybe possibly five of these. It will vary, but generally playing the game, that's what I've found is the case. Now, for the prototypes um, class, you'll mostly find either sub-machine sub gun runners. Uh, they'll, they'll fire uh, bursts at you at very low damage. And then there will be those ones that are, do the melee jump attack. They're fun, aren't they? They come racing in and jump at you. 
uh, about chest high and it releases a shock wave. Um, then we go on to the um, we go on to the army uh, runners again. They have a submachine gun, but then you add in a shotgun to the mix. When we get to the military ones, the runners move into in close aim at their shotgun at players and shoot single shot now. They, those guys do a heck of a lot of damage and if you're going to take anybody out first the shotgunners are the guys to do it when we get to the phoenix though we then add in a rocket launcher yay woohoo we can't wait for that one can we uh, the runner will aim at the player indicated by a red light beam reaching from the rocket launcher attached to the player. So there's like a red beam that, or a laser beam, freaking laser beam that, that comes and tries to target you to lock on and um, yeah, fires rockets at you basically. And then with the apocalypse, the apocalypse, um, apocalypse uh, runner will uh, fire large bursts of poisoned SMG rounds. And when they hit you, they will radiate you. You take damage over time. Sounds fantastic. Can hardly wait to get into that. So, where are these guys' weak points? Well, um, it's pretty easy to kill these guys, to be honest. Um, the most of them have a fuel tank on their back, very prominent. You'll see them pretty clearly on their back. That's what you should be aiming at, um, you know, sniper rifles and, and maybe something like the Magnus are very, very effective at taking them out. I've found that, uh, I actually find that the, the SMGs are pretty good once you get the re recoil under control, but most guns aim for, um, aim for, the, um, aim for that little uh, fuel tank on the back. Um, the military ones will have a little bit armor plating around it, uh, so it's you've got to destroy the plating first. Um, the head is also a weak point, and so you will see um, when you're hitting enemies, there'll be two different colors of sparks coming off them. If you see yellow sparks, you're doing some kind of armor damage. The blue sparks that you'll see, you're basically doing direct damage. So that means that you've destroyed armor and or you're hitting a weak spot. So it's very important that you kind of get yourself in the habit of looking for um, those indicators to whether you're being effective in the uh, gunfight. And um, yeah, the thing I would say about these uh, guys, I, I generally find that uh, shotguns, and a pistol for the prototypes will take them down pretty easily. As you progress to the harder uh, runners, harder classes, you might find that a combination of an SMG or an, uh, an assault rifle with a shotgun mixed in will do the job. But as you saw at the very starting clip, I actually took one down fairly easily with a sniper rifle also. So, yeah, they're not too hard runners. Um, they can be annoying, but they're, they're basically not a very hard robot type to um, to take care of. Okay, so let's move on to the most annoying enemy in the game, the Tick. Yes, these guys are, um, they're not that hard to get rid of, but boy oh boy, they can be damned annoying. Small in size, but surprisingly agile, the uh, wiki says. I can attest to that. The tick will launch itself at you and they'll get too close. They do a lot. Oh, God, these things are annoying. And trying to shoot them sometimes can be <laughs> incredibly frustrating. Um, some of them, though, if you're smart, um, well, they, they will self-destruct. Um, and if you're smart enough, if they stand in the, uh, the same spot for a while, they'll just e explode. And as long as you're not close to them, it's not a major drama. Uh, you will see them have a bright red sensor and that you you will know they're around because they've got this really, really annoying noise, this kind of clicking noise. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Um, their abilities are the speed combined to a close range jump attack that deals low to moderate amounts of damage. 
very very easy to fight but the the phoenix classes uh, will have explosives strapped to them the, the one big advantage about the ones that are strapped with dynamite is they don't tend to move very quickly because <laughs> they're kind of um all kind of weighed, weighed down with all this uh, tnt or c4 or whatever it is so yeah just be here you can kill them pretty easily these guys are just an annoyance in the game. They're, they're, they aren't that hard to deal with, um, but they, they will swarm you, and they can do a reasonable amount of damage. There's nothing worse than dying to one of these guys, having, you know, taking care of a whole bunch of different enemies, and these guys come in and jump on your face, and, um, yeah, down you. Moving on to the next guys, and I think these are my favourite uh, enemy types in the game, the Hunter class. I love going toe-to-toe -to -toe with these guys. They're intelligent, they're swift, they can be very silent, and they're pretty accurate. So it is quite a challenge to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these guys. Um, they do have this kind of weird thing that they do once they get close to you where they'll jump far into the air and they'll try and stab you with sharp blades yeah and yet they these are your favorite ones g4 yeah no they are they're they're fantastic i love going toe to toe with these with them these guys you notice a loud will when it is performing this attack that is the stab attack and give you a backhanded slice Oof. from longer distances though it will fire machine guns and arm mounted weapons if a hunter notices something um, when the stealth bar turns yellow, um, it will howl once and begin traveling to the last seen location you were noticed at. So if you, if it sees you moving, it is quite an effective um, strategy to get away from these guys. But they do hone in on you pretty, pretty quickly and at a terrifying rate. So prototypes pretty much have a machine gun. And uh, the, the pneumatic blade that I explained before. Once we get into the military um, class, they will also add a sniper rifle and uh, with 50 cal ammo, which is quite nice if you get hit in the head with it. Um, and it will down you in one, so the very high damage. Um, you also get those guys, and I'm sure you've come across the guy with the gas grenade launcher. He's a real bundle of laughs to try and deal with. Um, I've been pinned down in, in a house with those guys, and it's not fun. When we get into the Phoenix class, however, it even gets even better because they've got an explosive shotgun to take you down with. And, um, yeah... Then the Apocalypse guy has a flamethrower, so... Um, all of these guys have ticks that they deploy. Um, so if you're wondering, you suddenly get ticks. From about the military grade uh, class onwards, they'll deploy ticks. Um, so if you're wondering where the ticks came from, there's your answer. Um, it's these hunter guys. Fantastic. So generally there's two places that you can hunt them. Um, First of all, the, the tank on or the fuel tank on the back of these um, these enemies, and then secondly, shoot them in the face. They don't like it. If you shoot them in the head, they don't like it. And that's usually the one I use a lot. I aim for the the fuel tank, but generally, if they're facing me, I'm aiming for that little square face, that bunny wee face, as we say in Scotland. Um, but if you shoot kind of in between their arms and the kind of shoulder region, that will also do a heck of a lot of damage on um, the good old hunters. E any EMP um, type things will have a great um, effect on them. I generally find I don't have too much of a drama with an SMG and a shotgun taking these guys down, as you're seeing by the footage. Um, and no, they're just a lot of fun to fight. On to the second most annoying <laughs> robot in the game, the Seeker. Uh, seemingly harmless at first glance, the Seeker acts as a scout, signaling your location to nearby allies. I do not like these guys, they are the beep beep, scan scan. Oh, he's over here. Come and say hello. Kind of robots, um, and they will just call in reinforcements from all over the place to come and kind of 
gave you a bad day, really. And um, they're not really combat focused as such. They instead, they'll just kind of roam around and make your life difficult. That's what they do. That's what they're designed to do. Um, they pretty much bring in runners, hunters, and tanks if you're in range. So, yeah. Fantastic. I'm sure you've seen them before. They're not that hard to take out, to be honest. They're just annoying. Single shot to one of the thrusters um, from maybe an assault rifle or a sniper rifle generally takes care of them. Um, obviously, as you go up through the classes, they'll just increase the amount of armor they have. But yeah, I just don't like these guys. They're just damn annoying. But anyway, what do you do? Okay, so let's move on to the harvesters, and they are described as attempting target, 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 target for an ambush, but not under to underestimate them. The harvesters focus in its time and energy on gathering resources and fuel from its surroundings, oftentimes escorted by fellow machines. So you, generally, what you'll find with these guys is they'll either have runners or they'll have hunters escorting them generally runners um depending it just depends on what particular uh, class that you come across to who's escorting them um it will not be sh it will not shy away from defending itself if threatened do not or can to ensure it walks away unharmed yeah okay so um the the prototypes like i said will have generally have runners on them uh, you might find the occasional hunter um, and they'll have a uh, missile barrage um, they also have this con concussion pulse if you get too close so they can be a little bit nasty just on, in the very kind of basic prototype and then you get into the military um, the military ones they've got missiles but they also have got the ticks that come off them um, they can also release some gas and then with the Phoenix class, again, pretty much all the same. Um, stomp, concussion, gas. Probably, as you get up through the different classes, they tend to have more armor on them too. And um, yeah, the apocalypse is just a nightmare by the looks of it. So, their weak points, um, really the center pod has a weak point near the center of each of the drills. The eyes... And um, yeah, generally it's the fuel tank that you have to go for. And again, I will put a when you get to part two, you'll see how to um, how to deal with these guys fairly effectively. As you can see by the footage, if you get too far away from them, then you're going to get yourself in all kinds of strifes because you're going to attract other um, other robots to you. So yeah, no, they're, you can take these down, and they're they're not that difficult once you get your technique sorted out. So finally, uh, to the tanks. Thanks very much for coming. Um, and as it says here, um, the second most heavily armoured and armed of the machines. So these guys are tough, and I've got to tell you, I've, I've killed, I think, one of these, and I, I probably used about 500 armour rounds to kill it. These things are tough. I'm not sure what class I had, but boy, oh boy, it took a lot of taking down. So... Um, the tank towers over houses and players alike, shaking the ground with each step. And you'll hear these guys. You will hear them from miles away. Don't engage it with a, a strategy. Plan your encounter in advance and always be ready to run when the rockets start flying. These things are, are brutal. Absolutely brutal if you get into, um, into a gunfight with them. And um, yeah, cover's always good. I think I used, I was in a bunker complex somewhere and I, I had to hide behind a wall basically and just keep shooting this thing. Uh, the tank fires a large burst of heavy rounds with its machine gun at the prototype level and also has a missile launcher. This is another one that has a concussion pulse and will rush you. Uh, the tank runs towards a player damaging any player in its way. Um, it will also use the rush towards a seeker that has spotted the player. So the seekers work hand in hand with these things. So they are nasty. And um, when we get to the military one, they've got tick deployment. They have a linear accelerator with this is a rail gun. Oh, that sounds fantastic. 
A real gun as well as a machine gun. Oh my goodness. Mortars. Oh jeez. And then of course, then we're getting into gas releases and all kinds of... Th these things are just nasty. They're just nasty. Um, so where's its weak point? Uh, the main body, um, it's heavily armoured from the front. So you really, if you're going to target them, you're going to have to go around the back somehow. And we'll have a look at that. I don't think I've got any footage of um, taking one of these down yet. So that's something I'm going to have to do for part two, I guess. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you very much. They're nasty and probably the hardest, one of the hardest enemies you're going to come across but um you will hear these things from miles away so you have plenty of opportunity to run now there is one more boss type that you have to be aware of and that's the reaper but he you're not going to come across him until you get to level 21 or an area that is a level 21 area um, and these things are just supercharged tanks basically um they're above the apocalypse uh, class and they're basically the boss of the game um, but basically they, they look like a, a well armoured a, a very big armoured um, armoured tank I haven't come across one yet so I can't speak to it too much but it just reading the description through um, these things look very very nasty you're going to find them in the mountains, farmlands, north coast and Himanjala island as well as the Alpine Unrest, which is the DLC. Um, like I said, after hitting level 21, you're going to find these things. So I can't wait to find that one. Um, the big tanks are bad enough. So there's one that's even worse. So yeah, okay. So there we go. That is it for, um, for part one. In part two, we're going to go out and do some field testing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can hardly wait. So we're going to go through each of these robot classes and I'm going to give you some strategies and um, kind of some in-game footage to show you how to take care of these guys using a whole lot of different tools um, so you stay alive longer. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this one, make it sure you give it a like rating. Comments are always appreciated. I love reading them and we'll catch you next time on Gaming for XP. See ya.